Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on research methods, focusing on interviews. Interviews are a research method commonly used by sociologists to gain an insight into the thoughts, opinions and attitudes of respondents. They are conversations between a researcher and a respondent where the researcher poses a series of questions to the respondent on a topic of sociological interest. These questions can be open or closed and may follow a specific interview schedule, although more skilled researchers may opt not to use the schedule, rather posing questions to a respondent based upon the information they have provided in their previous answers. There are a range of different types of interview that researchers may choose, and the choice often depends upon the type of data they want and their method methodological preference. Structured interviews, preferred by positivists, are face-to-face -face interviews where researchers ask questions from a list of standardised questions, usually closed questions that obtain quantitative data. Semi-structured interviews will contain a list of questions to ask, but the researcher will have the ability to ask follow-up questions if the respondent reveals something of interest that needs further analysis. Unstructured interviews, preferred by interpretivists, are more like a guided conversation, with the researcher posing questions based upon the responses from those being interviewed and having greater flexibility to probe deeper into the meanings and motivations behind social behaviours. These usually provide lots of qualitative data, but require a higher level of skill on the part of the researcher to conduct. Group interviews, often referred to as focus groups, are a way for researchers to gather lots of information by posing questions to several respondents at the same time. These can follow any of the structures already discussed and are often used in education to triangulate information provided by another source, such as statistics. Interviews are a useful tool for sociologists conducting research as they have a higher response rate than questionnaires. Of course, less interviews would be conducted than questionnaires handed out, but a researcher is more likely to gain valuable insights into people's behaviours from conducting interviews than waiting for questionnaires to be returned, reissued and returned again. The flexibility of the interview is also useful. Depending on the structure of the questions in interviews, they can provide both quantitative and qualitative data. A further advantage of using interviews is that having a researcher present means that questions can be clarified. Researchers can develop a rapport with respondents and assess the validity of their responses through observing body language and other non-verbal cues. And structured interviews in particular can be more reliable than other methods, as the standardised questions can be replicated and results compared. However, there are practical, ethical and theoretical issues with interviews. One practical issue is the cost. Training and recruitment of interviewers can be expensive, more so for unstructured interviews where researchers need to be more skilled to probe for answers. A second practical issue is that it can be time consuming, not only in the training and transcribing of responses given, but in obtaining a representative sample of the population being studied. A final practical issue relates to the personal skills of the researcher. Some researchers will naturally have more empathy than others, and so training needs will differ based upon the personality of the researcher and the structure of the interview. Ethically, interviews are useful in dealing with socially sensitive topics such as sexual harassment, bullying, domestic violence, but these may cause respondents to recall psychologically upsetting memories and researchers need to be equipped to deal with this. Developing a rapport and showing empathy is a helpful way of doing so. With group interviews, researchers have to be aware of the impacts that revealing information may have on their respondents. For example, boys revealing concerns about their education in a group interview may face ridicule from macho lads that see education as a feminine domain. This can be addressed through anonymity and ensuring confidentiality of group discussions, and this is not limited to group interviews. Some interviews in work and education, for example, may disclose bullying or be critical of employers and those in authority, and so the respondent needs to be protected from potential harm to their career or well-being that those they inform on might pursue as retribution. Finally, illegal or immoral activities could be disclosed during the course of the interview, which presents researchers with an ethical dilemma. Should they inform authorities? If they do, it could compromise their research and relationships developed with respondents. There are also theoretical issues with the different formats of interviews. Firstly, validity. 
The presence of an interviewer may mean that people are less likely to give honest answers, rather socially desirable ones. Issues such as racism and homophobia are less likely to be uncovered in the presence of an interviewer, and this is a limitation of the method. Furthermore, interactions with the, the interviewer, particularly in unstructured interviews, could easily be influenced by the theoretical position of the interviewer. Feminists may show more empathy to female oppression, Marxists to social class inequality, and this could lead the respondent to over-exaggerate aspects of their experience to please the researcher. Interviews, particularly unstructured interviews, may lack reliability because questions and responses will be more unique, meaning they are less likely to be replicated. This also means it may be difficult to generalise the findings to the wider population. Methodologically, positivists would prefer the standardised nature and reliability of structured interviews, whilst interpretivists will favour the validity and ability to gain an insight into the lives of others that unstructured interviews provide. Finally, we'll quickly look at some examples of where we have come across interviews in education and crime. Uh, Becker's use of unstructured interviews with high school teachers when researching the ideal pupil is one good example. Carlin using unstructured interviews in her research on gender and criminality and Willis using unstructured and group interviews to research anti-school subcultures in learning to labour are just a few examples that you could use. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on research methods looking at interviews. Thanks for watching.